Welcome into Extra Time. We have a full house for you today. Kay Murray and Shaka Hislop in the studio. And joining us, we have Stevie Nicholl, Frank LaBeouf and Craig Burley. Stevie, we're going to start with you. It's a question from Navin who says, why is Stevie so salty about Conte making Spurs top four contenders next season? Their current squad isn't that bad. Look at what he did with Victor Moses. Why am I so sulky? I, <laughs> I just don't think Conti is going to go to a team that doesn't, that isn't going to turn around, or the owner, or or whoever's in charge, and say, right, here's here's a pot of money, uh, go and get who you want. As far as as far as Tottenham squad, Tottenham need a complete rehaul, if you ask me, uh, I, I overhaul a bigger pardon. I mean, their back line in particular needs completely replacing, no question. And actually. The fact that Harry Kane wants away tells you that he doesn't think that the squad they've got is going to be any time soon challenging for <clears> anything. <throat> so, it's not just me. If Harry Kane doesn't fancy Spurs, then I'm going to go with Harry Kane. <laughs> they weren't that far off last season, Stevie. Stevie, Stevie, we just had a... Oh, you were listening we... to Gab. <laughs> Stevie, you did, you, you'll, you'll not be aware of this, but we actually just, Frank and I, along with Jules and Shaka, just had a conversation on the show about uh, Conte uh, going to Tottenham and I described it as a marriage made in hell because here we have a manager who fights and kicks and screams when he doesn't, doesn't get what he wants and all of a sudden people think Tottenham are going to be this big open checkbook club. I mean, it just doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, yeah, it might make them, it might no. make them a little bit better, but... I mean, but, yeah, I'm 100% with you, Craig. And as I said, I mean, I might have been trying to be clever, but at the end of the day, if, you know, you said, Kay, that, well, they weren't that far away. The proof of the pudding is that Harry Kane, and he's right in the middle of it, he's with them every day, he knows exactly what's in the team, what's who's in the squad, and he wants a way. That tells you that, number one, what's there isn't good enough, and two, he doesn't think they're going to be bringing enough bringing in enough good recruits uh, hold, to make them that much hold, better. So, hold, hold as on. I said, what, Harry what, Kane's your man to go by. What's this? What's this? Uh, they almost made it last year. They were five points off the top four. <laughs> Antonio, Antonio Conte does not go into clubs to just try and clamber into the top four. He goes to clubs like Juventus, like Chelsea and Inter Milan to fight and kick and scream, to demand that they are getting the tools to be fighting for the title. No, no manager is going to take this current Spurs squad, I believe, over 38 games past Liverpool and Manchester City. So if if you're saying Antonio Conte might come in and get them in the top four, I would say maybe. But Antonio Conte... Is that why he would want to go to a club? No, not at all. He wants to compete for titles. So th this is all pie in the sky. I'd say it's a very salty pie, though. A highly <laughs> salted one. It does sound like that to me. We're all salty. We're all salty. <laughs> when we, we're all, we do I'll tell you what. We're all salty when we don't tell people what they want to hear. Because people just want us to go, oh, yeah, isn't this wonderful? Daniel Levy, he's going to give him 400 million to spend and we're going to win the league. My God. <laughs> yeah, dream on. Yeah, definitely high salt <laughs> content there. Uh, Shaka, yeah. which club is more attractive for a manager? No bias here. Everton or West Ham? That's, that's, you, you can't give me that no <laughs> bias caveat all of a sudden. I, I am going to go with all my bias. West Ham, with all my bias, Key. Uh, That's definitely the bias. Yeah. Yeah, Stevie, <laughs> would you disagree there? Oh, hold on a second. Let me guess. Hold on. So, West Ham are playing in a stadium that doesn't belong to them. It's, it's a big bit, and it's big and it's open. <laughs> Whereas Everton, on the other hand, I've got an owner who is building a new stadium uh, and who's backing the team to the tunes of hundreds of millions and will continue to do so. Let me guess. We'll go to West Ham or we'll go to Everton. Mm. <laughs> can you get back to me? I'm not quite sure. Uh, Stevie, uh -huh. can you get back to me on whether you think Stevie Gerrard should take the Everton job? Ooh. 
I don't see why he shouldn't take it. Just because of his connection with Liverpool doesn't mean he can't be the manager of Everton. Um, now, whether he's ready for it yet, I don't know. But I don't. I, I would have. I would have no problem with Steven Gerrard taking the Everton job. Put it that way. Okay. Uh, we'll move on then. We've got Deb says for Craig and Frank, and we'll start with you, Frank. Do you think Tuchel would switch to a back four next season? What is better, a back three or a four? With a back three, is the creativity of an extra attacking player get sacrificed? No, I don't think so. I think he, he, uh, he proved today with a back three that it completely worked as long as uh, uh, James and uh, Chilwell going to be on the, uh, in the midfield, you know, bringing the defensively and especially offensively as well. So you don't sacrifice anything. Uh, and it worked uh, mostly during the season. But you all, we all know that you have to be strong at the back in order to, uh, to bring something also offensively. So I don't think Tuchel is gonna, is gonna change anything. He, he found the recipe of, uh, of a success in the, in the biggest competition. So why would he change? Craig, three or a four? Uh, I think it comes down to personnel and, you know, within that personnel that he's got, that's what he felt. And I mean, don't forget, he did it straight away when he came in and he stuck with it almost all the way through. So he knew what he wanted and he thought that worked with the personnel he had the best. And so unless they go out and, and you know, buy a couple of new defenders uh, in the summer, which seems unlikely, then I, I don't think he would change. But, but you know, both... People get, people get, you know, their knickers in a twist about formations, you know, you know, certain for me, both formations have, have advantages and disadvantages. It all boils down, most of the time, to the personnel uh, within those structures. All right, let's talk uh, preparation then. Frank LeBoff. Oh, Frank in here, an extra time. Well, we'll ask you oh. then. In preparation for major yeah. international tournaments, what were your typical training schedules like? How Beer. often did you train? And did you spend a lot of time learning yeah. about the opposition? Yeah. No, ask him Ask him a proper <laughs> question. When was his last night out before a game? That's a better question. Was it two days or three days? Or, or why he missed that 1984 <laughs> game? Don't, that bring up, don't bring up the 84. Oh, oh. Don't bring up 84. Frank, tell so us. According to Craig, the best... Well, according to Craig, the best preparation is to drink beer. Uh, I would say that, uh, um, I don't know. I, I, I think it depends uh, where you are. You know, somebody like Kante just need a rest, uh, where somebody like Giroud, we need to, uh, many training sessions to find the same level. So it's a very, the first two weeks is like very individual. Then they're going to work. They're going to work tactically, of course, as well, because it's the first time maybe they have a time to to work a little bit uh, uh, tactically, but uh, there's not much to say. You you have a you have a personal preparation, individual preparation, and uh, and you try to find the, the best <clears throat> rhythm all together. Maybe the last two weeks. That's Steve, the only thing you can I can say about it. I heard for Stevie it was ice baths and cleanses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, ice bath. Uh, uh, the only thing that was in the ice was his beer. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's the only listen, thing. Ice how is many good World for. Cup winners are on the panel? Beer, the, <laughs> yeah, the two beers, listen, beers, Frank, beer and bruises. Listen, That's the only thing Frank, ice is good for. If, if Frank was Scottish, he wouldn't have been winning a World Cup. Trust me. Uh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> bleeding, well, he wouldn't bleeding have been lucky. <laughs> bleeding, bleeding lucky, he's French. What I was going to say is, I tell you what, before we played at the World Cup in 98, we came here to the States to, to prepare, inverted commas, and uh, <laughs> Rod Stewart came to train with us, and then we went to a Rod Stewart concert at Madison Square Garden in New York that evening, and then the manager said, you can have a night out. I mean... What could possibly go wrong? A night out in New York with 20 odd lads. Brilliant. I'm sure there are I some more stories there, but um, you know, I, I, could, I couldn't remember where a hotel was. I said, the taxi driver, we said, where's the hotel? I said, New Jersey. He said, you have to give me a bigger clue than that. I said, I don't know. In New Jersey. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so the moral the of the story is, yeah. you know the rest. All right, Tyrink Pascal says, Shaka, which relegation promotion style do you prefer? All three teams in the Prem going down or in the Bundesliga and also Bundesliga. in Ligue 1, where one team gets the chance to keep their spot? I, 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 like, that, uh, I like that system a lot, um, having, having the playoff, because sometimes, you know, you, you finish, what is it, third from top in, in, in the Bundesliga or whatever it is, you may not be better prepared than the team that, that's third bottom. I mean, you could make that same argument for all three of the, of the wanting to be promoted teams and, and the relegated teams. But I, I like that system a whole lot more. Do you like this? Why, do don't, like... We, why, why, why don't we get, Kay, a very impartial, unbiased view on this and get our sometimes colleague, Derek Ray, on the phone and ask him who does it better, Germany or England? And then we can all have a bet which way he, he goes on this. It would be an easy uh, bet. Uh, I have a feeling we'll all win what, that though, bet. We do have Frank yeah, LeBlanc on the show bets because it's, it's the same in France. Mm. Do you like the system, Frank? Yes, I like the system. And uh, I, I experienced the system because I went up with, uh, with Strasbourg finishing second in the League 2 and playing against Rennes, we finished 18th. And we had... Uh, we had uh, Three games to go up and two games uh, with two legs against Rennes. And uh, the last game at uh, in Strasbourg, uh, that was the atmosphere was exceptional. It's tiring because you are at the end of the season, but uh, you have a chance to go up and Rennes had a chance to not go down. So I think it's interesting. It brings something special uh, to the to the to the League One and to the Bundesliga. All right, last question from Dan the Orange Man. Stevie, how difficult is it for a fullback to play on the opposite side of their stronger foot? Could we actually see Trippier play left back at the Euros? Um, I, I can honestly tell you, I, d I didn't find it a problem. Um, you know, you've got to, you, you kind of look at the positives either way. Um, you know, I guess. I guess if you're a right-footed uh, right-back playing left-back, your tendency is to come inside onto your right foot. Um, but other than that, I, I don't I don't see there's that much of a difference, to be honest. I, I never... I never... I couldn't have cared less whether it was right-back or left-back, put it that way. So, yeah, but just the, the only the, tendency is... That? It's to come inside. Oh, well, I tell you what. I tell that? you what. If you're a good, if you're a bad fullback, you, you struggle to play either side. But <laughs> Stevie will. I think Stevie will appreciate this player. One of the greatest, and I mean, fantastic. One of the most fantastic fullbacks of his generation was a right-footed player playing left back for Manchester United, and that was Dennis Irwin. Oh, Dennis I Irwin was one of Dennis Irwin was one of the best fullbacks of that generation bar none and Dennis was right footed so there's your answer if you're a good and, enough player and before, you can do it I thought he was going to say Maldini then right footed and, left back uh, Frank you want and, and, and before and before you are Manuel Amoros was named the best player uh, in I think in the World Cup best defender on the left side in the World Cup 82 when he was a right footed and used to play on player. the on the right side Mm. What a player, fantastic. Amoros. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Well, that will do it for right. the latest edition of Extra Time. Very salty. Very, very salty. Very salty edition. Very salty edition. Yeah. We, we do have some, <laughs> love salt, some love salt versions that you can catch daily. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.